Hey guys, it's Scar, and today we're going to be going over my Magicka Warden build for the Scribes of Fate chapter. I really like this build. This has been the most fun out of any build that I've had so far this patch. I have had so much fun on this, right at a point where I was just honestly getting really tired of this game, and where the game was becoming very stale. I started playing this build, and I can't stress enough, this build has been so much fun, so please check it out for yourself. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. We are slowly making our way to 6k subs, and each one counts, so please, please, please do that. It is free. Clicking one button helps me so much. But guys, that is it from me. No more talking. Let's get on with the build video. Alright guys, let's get started. First things first, we're going to look at our character sheet. We are going to be a Khajiit on our Magden. Khajiit, in my opinion, is the best when we're building into crit. Uh, it's also really good for your sustain because you get tri-stat recovery. And honestly, I just really like the overall damage. You could also go Breton if you want. I think Breton would be really good for your sustain and would really help. But right now we're just doing Khajiit because I kind of also go back and forth between Stam Warden and Mag Warden a lot. And honestly, Khajiit is just best in the slot for that, in my opinion. Our attributes are going to be 47 points into magic and 17 points into health to give us a max magic pool of 23k, a max health pool of 29k, but when we give ourselves our minor toughness buff, we're up to over 31k. And then our max stam buff is our <laughs> max resource is going to be 17.5. And then we're going to be using the warrior to increase our overall weapon damage. And then we're also going to be using Vampire Stage 3 to increase our tankiness at lower health. Because of that on death passive, it is absolutely phenomenal and I definitely recommend it. And then we're also going to be using Orzogus Marked Bear Hunch for our food. It's going to give us a max health of 4,300 and it's going to increase our stamina and magic recovery by 369 for 2 hours. If you cannot afford this because I definitely know that it's really expensive, uh, use the Jewels of Miserable food. It is basically the exact same thing. You just lose a little bit of health. That gives you 3,927. Gives you 4,300. So you're losing like 400 health, which is really not that bad. And then you're also losing 12 magic and stem recovery. So it's really not that big of a decrease. And it's a lot cheaper. I definitely recommend that. And then onto our gear, we're going to be using as our main set on our, both of our bars, we're gonna be using a Way of the Fire. We're gonna be using a heavy helmet in the reinforced trait. Way of the Fire is going to give you a line of weapon spell damage, a line of max stamina, a line of crit chance. And then when you deal damage with a weapon, you deal an additional 2,593 flame damage. That can occur once every two seconds and it scales off of your higher weapon or spell damage. So that's going to be buffed up a little bit when our when we're fully buffed up. I think it's going to get to around 4k, almost 4.5k when our weapon damage is fully buffed up. And honestly, that's just really consistent damage because we're going to have an ability that we're going to use as one of our skills. It's going to be a dot from a weapon ability, and that is going to be able to proc our way of the fire. So this damage is going to proc every two seconds, and it is phenomenal. We're also going to be using Curus of the Fire. This is going to be a heavy chest piece and reinforced as well. And then our last uh, body piece for Way of the Fire is going to be our legs, and that's also going to be reinforced. We always want to do our heavy pieces and reinforce because that's going to give us the most amount of armor possible to increase our resistances. We're also going to be using One Piece Magma Incarnate in the medium uh, weight in the Divine's trait. So this is going to be a line of web, or magic and stem recovery. The reason why we're doing this is because we have one extra piece on this build and we're going to be doing this just to help our recovery out a little bit because honestly, Mag Warden and recovery always needs help. And this really is the difference between being able to sustain very well and not being able to sustain. We're also going to be using Rallying Cry as our back bar set. Rallying Cry is going to give us a line of crit chance, max magic, another line of crit chance, and then while Battle Spirit is active, aka when you're in either Cyrodiil, Battlegrounds, Imperial City, or a duel, those four instances, uh, heal, critically healing yourself or an ally, it's going to give you an extra 300 weapon spell damage, and then 1650 crit resist for 20 seconds. So that is great for your crit resist, and it's also giving you 300 weapon spell damage. That's huge. So again, Light Rallying Cry Divine's Hands. Also we're using Light Rallying Cry Sash and Divine's as well. And then Light Rallying Cry Shoes and Divine's as well. We're also gonna be using our, our jewelry. We're going to be using Necklace of the Fire. This is going to be in the Infused trait with a weapon and spell damage glyph on it. This is going to, the reason why I like Infused over Bloodthirsty, I know everybody says Bloodthirsty gives you more damage, but I really think the damage on this is awesome. 
and infused buffs your healing as well so i really really love that then our other ring is going to be Ring of the Fire and the Infused Trait with a Weapon Spell Damage Glyph on it. So I have Death Dealers on this because right before I was recording this build video, uh, I was in a group, just uh, in some group play. So personally, I like to run, instead of Death Dealers, I like to run Pale Order. I think Pale Order is phenomenal for this. The amount of dots that you have really helps you heal so much. So we're gonna be using Pale Order for this. When we're solo in group, use Death Dealers. And both are going to be in the infused trait, and my pale order one is going to be have a reduced magic and stamina re uh, cost, and that's really going to help your sustain. If you're a Breton on this, I don't think you need to use that. You can just go full weapon damage. But since we're Kaji and we don't have the reduced cost passive, I have it on this uh, ring right here. And then we're going to be using Master's Perfected Ice Staff as our front bar ice staff. It's going to be charged in the shock damage enchantment. So what this is going to do is going to give you a line of weapon and spell damage, uh, 103 weapon spell damage for the perfected line. And then the two piece is reduces the cost of destructive touch by 10%. So it's going to help your sustain a little bit. And it's going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 600 for four seconds after activating it. So your spell damage and weapon damage is just going straight up through the roof after you cast this. And I just definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it. If you can't get the perfected version because you just don't have anybody to run a uh, Dragon Star Arena with, honestly, doing it on normal is fine. You're just losing out on 103 weapon and spell damage, which in the long run, it's not that much. As long as you just have the Master's Ice Staff, that is what matters. I definitely recommend grinding this out. It doesn't look like it's going to be changed anytime soon. And I would even recommend looking at this for next patch as well. And then back bar, Rallying Cry Ice Staff and the Defending Trait. Ice Staff, the reason why I use Ice Staff a lot of the time is people still ask me this. And it's been changed for a while now. So Ice Staff, you're going to be able to... Uh, it, right here, Ancient Knowledge. This is going to reduce the cost of blocking by 36% and increases the amount of damage you block by 20%. So basically, you are just a lot more tanky with Ice Staff. And Warden also got buffed recently. I think it's going to be under Winter's Embrace right here. Is it going to be here? Increases your damage done by 2%, and then which increases to 12% when wielding an Ice Staff. So your damage done is just going to be a lot higher on your front bar as well because you're having an Ice Staff. So that's massive as well. So since we're already on our skills, let's go over this. Frost Reach, this is going to be your main spammable on this build. This is going to be what's buffed by your Master's Ice Staff. And honestly, this is also going to be what's buffing your Wave of the Fire. So you see that this damage deals damage right away. This ability deals damage right away. But then it also does a dot over 20 seconds. And since this is a dot from a weapon damage... Uh, since a weapon skill line, sorry, I'm kind of tripping over my words right now. I'll just take a break. And there we go. So since this is a, an ability from a weapon skill line, that dot is going to proc your way of the fire every two seconds. So not only is this dot going to be hitting every little bit, but the way of the fire is going to be proccing every two seconds as well. So your dot pressure on this build is honestly extraordinary. And I love it so much. And then Bird of Prey, this is going to be a lot of things for your build. It's going to A, give you major expedition for six seconds, so you're going to be speedy. Uh, it's also going to be your snare removal, so it's going to give you immunity to snares and immobilizations for four seconds. And then on top of that, you're also getting minor berserk, so it's going to increase your damage up by 5%. So huge, just by having it slotted. And then Blue Betty, this is going to be your source of major brutality and sorcery, increasing your weapon spell damage by 20%. And every five seconds, the Nest removes one negative effect from you. So honestly, it's nice to purge off a lot of abilities off of you. When I get hit by a cold fire, I am just spamming this ability, just praying that it purges off uh, that cold fire dot because that is not fun. And then Deep Fisher, this is going to be your main burst damage on this build. If you could time this right onto your second Shulk after that six seconds, you're going to be doing a lot more damage. But then on top of that, enemies damaged by this are going to be afflicted with major and minor breach. So it's going to reduce their physical and spell resistance by 6k and then 3k. So you're really just going to be making them a lot squishier after hitting this. And I just definitely recommend trying to line this up with a nice burst combo. And then fetch your infection. I wanted an ability that would kind of complement frost reach, 
So I came up with Fetcher Infection. I like this as a nice dot. And on top of that, you're also going to be getting minor vulnerability on your enemy. So it's going to increase their damage taken by 5%. So it's just going to make your other abilities hit a lot harder. And just having that dot on them is just an extra nice source of damage. And then Dawnbreaker of Smiting. Uh, this ability is as old as time. This one, I mean, does anything really need to be said about this? Comboing this ability with your Deep Fisher and then Frost Reach combo, you're going to be doing a lot of damage between those three abilities. And then Arctic Blast, this is going to be your main burst heal. So when you're taking too much damage and your heals over time are not really healing you for what you hope, this is what you're going to press and it is going to shoot you right back up. I don't know about full health, but it's going to shoot you up pretty high and it's going to help you out a lot. It's also going to stun your enemies nearby too. So that's a really good way if you can just switch back and forth between your back bar and then hit them with that Frost Reach Dawnbreaker combo or something like that. It's going to really give you a lot of pressure when you're seeing them on uh, cooldown. And then a Lotus Blossom. I really like Lotus Blossom on this build. Just getting that major prophecy and savagery, increasing your weapon and spell crit is honestly huge. And critting more often is going to help your Pale Order heals. And it's just going to uh, help your overall damage. So I definitely recommend it. And then Resolving Vigor. This is going to be your main heal over time, healing you for five seconds or for a lot. And then on top of that, you're also going to get Minor Resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 3k for 20 seconds. And then Leeching Vines, this is going to be another nice heal over time. And you're also going to get minor life steal to enemies that are damaging you. So honestly, you're just getting a lot of healing back. And then Ice Fortress, this is going to be your source of major resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 6k for 30 seconds. And then on top of that, you also get minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 5% as well. So you are getting a lot of tankiness from this one ability right here. And then since we already have minor protection, we do not need to use undo on our back bar. We can use Northern Storm instead, which gives you a lot of damage over 8 seconds. You basically summon a giant blizzard around you and you're just doing a lot of damage every second. You're also reducing your enemy's movement speed by 40%, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 300 as well. And on top of that, you're also getting major protection and reducing your damage taken by 10%. So between your minor protection right there and then when you activate this, your major protection, you are so tanky right there. It is amazing. Then finally, our champion points. Our blue slotables are going to be Focus Mending, Master at Arms, Cleansing Revival and Ironclad. Our red slotables are going to be Sustained by Suffering, Survival Instincts, Pain's Refuge, and Celerity. And our green slotables, the only things that matter are Breakfall, which is not a slotable, but still matters. Definitely use this. Rationer and Liquid Efficiency. And guys, that is the entire build. I really hope that you enjoyed This has honestly been the most fun out of any build that I've had this patch. I really, really like this one, and I definitely recommend checking this out for yourself. I can't stress that enough. I, this is, without a doubt, the most fun build that, that we've done this patch. Please, please, please try it. But guys, also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It is free, and we're moving along to 6K subs slowly but surely. So with every single person that does that, we get one step closer, and I just do appreciate that also if you don't if you haven't liked the video just clicking that one like button just helps me in the algorithm so much so please do that as well so guys that is it for me uh actually one more thing if you want to see builds like this live in action catch me live at twitch.tv forward slash the car where i stream five days a week come check it out the link will be in the description but guys that is really it for me this time no more talking i hope that you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys on the next video later